Life is a journey. Heptathlete Katerina Johnson-Thompson is about to embark on one of the most important legs of her journey. The 23-year-old from Liverpool is close to her chance to compete on the biggest stage for the biggest prize in sport, an Olympic gold medal. My name is Darren Campbell and in 2004 I won an Olympic gold medal for Great Britain in the 4x100m relay in Athens. Four years earlier in Sydney, I won an individual silver in the 200 metres. I loved my career. Athletics gave me so much and taught me so much. I know that to win any medal, you need to work hard, very hard. After bursting on the scene as a teenager at the London Olympics, Katerina has gone on to win major championship medals and has become one of the biggest stars in the sport. Last year, with a heptathlon gold in her sights, she endured heartbreak, but now on the eve of the Rio Olympics, she has Jessica Ennis-Hill and a top podium position in her sights. Over the past few months, I've been given special access to Kat in her qualification and run up to Rio in her quest to become Olympic champion. I used to live in Netherley in Liverpool and it was me, my mum, my nan, my granddad and my nan's sister all in one house growing up, so I had a big family, even though I was the only child. She was an absolute joy. She was a tomboy. A tomboy? She was a tomboy. Um, you know, when I, I thought I had a girl, I thought I bought all little dresses, but she wasn't having any of it. As soon as she could walk, um, she wanted leggings on, you know. Yeah. Always, I always had a house full of boys, because she used to play football every day. She never wouldn't let me buy any pink. No pink? No pink. I was always, like, active and moving around and stuff, but my mum put me in um, ballet dancing lessons from quite a young age, because that's what she did as a profession. Okay. She was a dancer and she danced around the world and stuff, and that's sort of the life she, like, put, not pushed on me, but she wanted for me. So, literally, from a very young age, I was in, like, ballet shoes, I was dancing, doing tap dance. But then when she said, that is it, I'm not doing it, I was heartbroken. I was going to say. Because she had uh, a chance to go to Royal Ballet, and she's like, I'm not doing it. So the teacher was saying, well, how about if I gave you private lessons, the teacher was saying, and she was like, no, I've had enough. So I said, OK, if you're going to stop, you need a hobby of some sort. And do you think your mum secretly wanted you to be a dancer? Yeah, she did. Like, literally the day I stopped dancing, like, her and the dance teacher were both crying their eyes out. Oh. I know, and we went through a number of different things. I did football, and then I did keyboard lessons, and then luckily, during my school, um, we did this athletics competition at the end of each year, and it's to the track I still train on to this day. Literally, that was the one thing I was excited about at the end of each school year, is when the summer's coming, I'll get to do athletics. So, Kat? This is where you grew up. This is your old school. Yeah. The only thing that changed is um, these extra railings. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about these railings. Just, Were you one of those naughty kids that I tried a, to escape? I was a really skinny kid. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so God, no, I couldn't even fit my leg through there now. I'm trying to spot spot teachers. Is that actually Mr. <laughs> I think that is Mr. Kirkley. You know that teacher? Yeah, I know. That's the one who used to be in charge of the sports. Hello, hello, sir. Alright, sir. <laughs> Reminiscing on old times. Reminiscing on old Good. times, sir. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about where I first started doing athletics Very and good, stuff, yeah. and when I got that high jump record when I was younger. Yes. You're well coached, aren't you? Coached, <laughs> are you taking a break, sir? <laughs> <laughs> but it does all start at school, doesn't it? You yeah. know, without a good teacher like yourself who sees a bit of talent in yeah. a young person. Well, it was a where it goes. Took it to Harriers and. You that know, was you after did. after you discovered that I did. I, like I was good at high jump though, wasn't it? Yeah, I was just about to, to say have... that we didn't have a high jump thing, you had a little bamboo stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You used to have I to scissor to kick over. And tell it, take round and hold it. <laughs> yeah. And then measure the height. <laughs> no, we didn't measure the height, we just kept going measure, higher and higher and higher, yeah. Raise your arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it used to be like. Yeah. Um but yeah, I remember used the used the sport, sort of used the coordinator yeah. of all that and I couldn't wait to go into year six because I knew that you was the teacher. He'd let me off a little bit more because he knew I was like sporty as well. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Thank okay. you for your time. And good luck. Oh. Pop yeah. in any time, catch June you. In the, the, <laughs> June, June 14th. June 14th, wait, 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 on the 16th. Okay. <laughs> We've got Sports okay. Day, Olympic Sports Day on June the 6th. June the 6th. Do you want to come okay. present the prizes? Yeah, okay, cool. Thanks, Thanks for that, sir. Thank you, sir. See you. Yeah. It's weird. 
calling them sir as well. Like if he'd said I saw him in Tesco and I was like, hi sir. Did he say like, you don't need to call me sir? <laughs> same height as well. Like, still calling them sir, it's weird. So looking forward to 2016, what is it you need to do to qualify? Get 6,200 points. So you're feeling the pressure? Literally, I, I'm, I'm not feeling the pressure, but I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling like I'm mentally um, terrified of getting injured. And that's the, the biggest pressure on me this year. I know that pressure all too well. And with a qualification for the Rio Olympics a must, I knew that Cap would be feeling the nerves as they prepared for two days of intense competition at the world-renowned Gotsas Hyper meeting. Two years ago when Cat last came here, she lifted the crown, but this time it wasn't about the glory. It was just about guaranteeing that all-important place on the plane. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. We're moments away from the heat. Katarina's on the line. How well did you sleep and how well did she sleep last night? She slept well. Yeah. Everything's OK. Yeah. We had a good sleep. Yeah, I, I, are you sharing rooms? Yes. OK. Yeah. Did you sleep well? Not really, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to get it over with now. Just want to get it over with. <laughs> Johnson Thompson in lane five. And cleanly away. Johnson Thompson finishing strongly though, takes it on the line. Mum, mum, you feel better? You feel better? That was so smooth. Yeah. So smooth. Yeah, so the first part's over with now, so yeah. 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 <laughs> she looked calm. Yeah, she always does. It's, uh, it's me who gets the nerves. She's very calm. <laughs> so you take away all her nerves? Yeah, and, and just what, what you have in your hand? Okay. <laughs> so, the first event is out of the way and a healthy contribution of points on the ball towards that all-important 6,200. You could sense a calmer feeling in the camp. But as Kat's long-term coach, Mike Holmes knows all too well, you can't take anything for granted. She hasn't jumped in competition for, what, eight or nine months? Since she last jumped, she's had a knee operation. So she has to believe that she's still the athlete she was. But Kat did what she does best and put in a solid performance in the high jump player in 192 and putting her at the top of the leaderboard going into the third event. She's crossed off a, a couple of things like it's her outdoor personal best. She's never gone higher than 190 outdoors, okay. which is good. Okay. So two events gone, yeah. on to shot foot, but so yeah. far so good. So far so good, yeah. Famous last words, as the good form wasn't set to continue in the shot, Kat's three attempts failed to impress her or Mike. Her furthest throw being just over 11 and a half metres, the lowest distance of all the athletes competing. With one event remaining of the first day, the team were hoping that there weren't going to be any more stumbles. Finish. I mean, the, the secret of being a good heptathlete is to come out of some sort of disaster or minor disaster like the shot, turn it around and run uh, you know, a world-class 200 time, really. You're never going to have, or almost never going to have the perfect set. I'm at the Now, Rest, recovery, focus on day two. Just getting my head down, trying to get some sleep and tackling the long jump tomorrow, which is um, a big talking point on everyone's lips for me in the long jump. And hopefully I can overcome what happened to me last year and 
yeah, just to get that, get the Olympic qualifier and just get my flight on the plane to Rio. So, fingers crossed, nothing happens. At last year's World Athletics Championships in Beijing, Katerina was a strong favourite for gold. She couldn't have asked for a much better start to the competition, ending day one in second place, just behind Jessica Ennis-Hill. And as she went into day two, which kicked off with the long jump, one of Kat's strongest events, hopes were high that she could really push for that world title. But after fouling her first two jumps, it seemed that things were not going to be so straightforward. Last chance then for Katarina Johnson-Thompson to change her fate in this World Championships. What does she do? What would you do? Do you go for it or do you play it safe? I'm feeling good, I'm feeling optimistic for the long jump. I think this is where I sort of turn my head tap. Guys already got the flag up before you even turn around. The guys got the red flag up and there's no red flag. So I like, oh, yeah, I've done it. That felt like an amazing jump. My coach always said in the past as well, if if like the act of getting a magnifying glass out, it's like normally it's like it's fine, like you can't see anything, you're actually looking for something. It's confirmed Katarina Johnson Thompson has had three fouls. It's the end of her world championships. And then three hours after that was just like awful. Like so bad. She came to my I said, let's just go to my hotel, get away from me. So she came and stayed with me for like two days. We just sat there, had room for you talk. Did yeah, talk? we talked, we okay. cried, we cried. <laughs> yeah. I cried there. Yeah, Obviously, we yeah, cried yeah, together. Yeah. That's why I want to be here for her and support her in any way I can. And, um, you know, these things happen. It happens in sports. If those things don't happen, then you don't learn. You know, she's learned so much and you can see it all in her attitude this year and everything. When I got back, it was, it was so strange. It was like, I was just sitting in my room and it was like, that this all happened and I'm just back here. And, you know, this just like, so, like I was embarrassed. I understand that feeling Kat would have had after Beijing. It feels like you'll never recover and move on from that moment. And in her case, that moment was the third red flag in the long jump. But she's a top athlete, and she knew that she had to use that experience to push herself even harder, to make sure that she got what she really wanted. It was like the end of the season, I had such a, a bad time. I you know, didn't do well in Beijing, obviously, got the three no jumps and long jump, and then tried to go to the plant just to get the 6 2 the qualifier, and ended up pulling my adductor in the javelin. And then <laughs> I came back from holiday, and pretty much 6 a.m. the next day, I was on the operation table because I just wanted to fix my knee. I just didn't want to bring attention to negative attention to myself as well, so I just kind of kept quiet. And you know, I was on crutches for two weeks and slow build up. And, but now things are flying, I'm jumping pain three for the first time since about 2010, which is just um, just all different me in person. It's crazy. So all that hard work, and it came down to this. The first time that she would have competitively jumped since the crushing events at the World Championships, and since that potentially career-changing operation. As Kat's first jump came nearer, you could really feel the tension. The smile said it all. 6.13, it's not safe. It was behind the board, it looked behind the board, didn't it? Yeah, way behind the board. Hey, listen, we'll take safe. I think we'll all take safe. Safe, 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 safe. Somebody else who's been very important and probably took a lot of the stress away from your mother is Barry Wells. 
Yeah, Barry is very, I'd like to call him a close family friend now. I think we've developed through friendship over the years. And um, it is a really weird one because it's like old and young and he yeah. always says like, what sort of role is it? And it's like a sort of like stepdad because he's so passionate about sports and particularly athletics and LFC. So we get along through that path. When did you meet Kat and when did you spot that talent? When she was 14, originally, I was spotted 14, I just thought this phenomenal youth high jumper and long jumper, phenomenal at that, also a good hurdler and she could sprint. And I thought, this girl can do everything. I've not seen her throw the javelin in the shop, but her talent is just phenomenal. Um, so at that stage, I think in 2008, I then decided I'm going to sponsor about 20 athletes going right through to 2012. And I decided to pick out the 15-year-old Katarina. You know, to my absolute astonishment, UK Athletics said to me, we've never heard of her. We've never heard of her. Um, do you really want to sponsor her? He's always had the sort of belief in me and he knew that it was all about Rio. He was, it was like sort of long term for him, but he funded the likes of me, J.D. Williams, Jessica and I said so. He's helped a lot of athletes in a lot of different ways, but the friendship sort of stuck after with our love of LFC and stuff. But yeah, he helped me get my driving lesson and, you know, put money towards my first car and stuff, which took a lot of the pressure off, especially my mum and me. And it's just not what you want after training, just have to get the get bus. The bus. <laughs> I have to walk through the park and then get the bus. It's, it's just, like another training session, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like, oh, really? So, yeah, that's he's been a huge help. It's great that with her success, she's giving back, um, obviously. But she know, is. She appreciates she, what you've done. She's a patron of it. She comes along and hosts events. The kids love it when they're here, especially, especially the young athlete. Um, they, they kind of love it when she's here. What do you think the score's going to be today? Chelsea aren't very good anymore, I don't know, so I'm going to go 3-1, three, one, look three, one. This is a good place to come and almost take you away from athletics. You don't have to think about training and you can just relax. Yeah, definitely. It's like, it, and it just, it just, it's another bonus that I get to come and see my favourite football team in Liverpool, but definitely it's such a good atmosphere when you get here. It's like feel-good vibes, you know, you get to meet wonderful kids like Kelly here and, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Like... <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it's good to like bond with the kids. And it really does, them. you can see the, the time we've been here, it really does raise their spirits, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. You okay there? You Back in Gotsis, and as the heavens opened, the lyrics to that famous Anfield anthem felt incredibly pertinent, as it was becoming clear that all was not well with Kat. She seemed to be struggling with her left quad, the same leg that had caused her problems so frequently in the past. But she continued and was able to put in three throws with the javelin, and at least get on the scoreboard. Once, it might have been about coming out on top. Now, it was just a case of survival. We kept seeing her trying to manipulate a quad a little bit, try and get the blood flow through there. Has that affected her? Is that, is that what the issue is? I think, yeah, I think she, it feels tight. She's not taking no chances. And she just wants to, you know, help she build up she's fancy. She wants to put all her jumps in and everything. So um, she just got to be very careful. She doesn't want to get any injuries. All right, well, look, we'll let you go and take your seat. We'll see you afterwards. So, it all comes down to this, the 800 metres. Kat needs at least 763 points to get to that all-important 6,200, meaning she has to run these two laps in around two minutes, 24 seconds. With an injury, that was easier said than done. To say I felt the tension, that's an understatement. On your mark. Come on, 
As you can see, Katrina Johnson Thompson going through, sitting near the back, and she'll just make sure that she runs quickly enough to get the points. Katrina Johnson Thompson just comes home for fourth. And she did it with relative ease in just over 2 minutes 16 seconds. A relief for all concerned. Mike, relief? Yeah, well, it's, it's not what we came for, to be honest. I mean, we came here to challenge, you know, for the leaders. But as the competition evolved and Kat picked up a, a little bit of a problem in the 200 at the end of the first day, you know, the thing was in jeopardy for a while. So to come through the 800 with the score we need to qualify for the Olympics, that's, I suppose, you could say it's, it's satisfying relief, yeah. It's been tough, let's be fair. The last, the last nine, ten months have yeah. been really, really tough. There's been a lot of highs and lows. And even the two days here, there's been a lot of highs and lows. And worst case scenario could have been having to do another heptathlon yeah. before that would, have been, that would have been disastrous. Really, really. That would have really put the whole Olympic year in jeopardy, you know? Like going into her, I just wanted to get 6-2 and like when you go through it and get a couple of PBs, you start to start to get yourself a little bit gassed. And it's like, yeah, I made it beyond for a PB score. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just sort of brought it back today and um, job done. I need to meet my own words and I came in for 6-2 and I got 6-3, so I've got my brain to you and that's, that's all I can do. Your mum has been through the, the same roller coaster that, that you've been through and it was interesting, before the 800 metres, she spent a lot of time with you as your rock and yeah, it, it really did seem just to get you in the right frame of mind to just do what you needed to do, yeah. which was 6,200 points. Yeah, I think she, it's a familiar face and she's just got this calm and sort of atmosphere around her. I just definitely needed, <laughs> needed my mum. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good job. I think, as Kat said, the events of Gotsis were a real reminder for everyone how unpredictable and potentially turbulent sport can be, particularly athletics and even more so multi-eventing. After she'd had a bit of time to recover, I went back to visit Kat at home to see what she made of it all. Hi! Hey. <laughs> oh my God! Hi, good to see you again. Good to see you too. Come in. <laughs> Good to see you. Do you want a drink? Ah, yes, please. Uh, just water. Are you sure? I'm, just I'm water. trying to pretend to be healthy. <laughs> so, yeah, water would be great. Okay. Is that water okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So, how have you been feeling since Scotsis? Um, Yeah, things have went well, obviously. I have to have one takes a lot out of you. So, at the minute, I'm just trying to rest and recover and, yeah, just get my head around the fact that the next big thing is the Olympics. So this is um, Trizzo, he's the one who always likes to play. And then this Hello. is Bronx, he's the one who always likes to eat. So this one's Bronx? Yeah, Bronx is the brown one, Trizzo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on now, play Trizzo nice, there's the yours. Did they help keep you relaxed? No, it's just, I don't know, I think anyone who's a dog lover or a dog owner can just like relate. Like, it's like they're always, we just got them, they're always here and they're always so loving. And yeah, they're, they're my two little best friends, I think. <laughs> so it got this. We saw that you were able to complete the heptathlon, but you did pick up a slight injury. How are things now? You've been back over a week, so how are things feeling? Yeah, it's been exactly eight days eight since days. yeah I finished, and yeah things are going well. Like things are actually quite good. It's um, I think it showed in my maturity and got this that I was able to like feel <laughs> and understand and know my body and know when to push it. Otherwise, it just it would have been back in the same similar situation as last year and. Um, yeah, I can't feel my quad anymore and, you know, the important thing was I got sick too. But now, there's a smile on your face, you see alive. Is there a, now a bigger inner strength of what the potential is come Rio? Yeah. Because you had some great performances as well out in Gotsis. Yeah, I can't believe it. At the end of the 800, I was just happy. I knew that I needed a certain time to get the 6-2. And then I was like, what? I came sixth. And I was like, you joking? I, I thought I would have fell way back, like after day two. And yeah, it just that gives me confidence that I can be at hundred, like not at hundred percent, and you know, still, still placing, still getting on, onto the podium, onto that podium and got it. So, 
Yeah, for me, it's just like, I know that I need to, to work on my throws, but like a lot of the work that is, is done. I know your mum likes to keep every single photograph yeah. and she told me that she had a photo of you and I and uh, I asked her to dig it out and she did. How old were you? Because I was 21 then. I was 21. <laughs> so how old were you? It was 2007, <laughs> the programme says. So, um, Around 14, 14. 14, 14 years old. Wow. Um, so really how long have you been doing athletics then? <laughs> I've been doing athletics since 2005. Wow, yeah. so you, that, that was the beginning of your journey. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah, I remember I queued up, <laughs> big queue after your autograph, a big queue. Not anymore. I queued up. <laughs> There's no queue. <laughs> and signed it and got the photo. And yeah, my mum, it's just, it's just crazy, isn't it's it? It's crazy, it's crazy. I feel like I've been a part of your journey and I feel like I'm here now in the middle of it. And, you know, at 14, did you ever imagine that you'd be sat here in your own house having achieved so much already as an athlete? No, no, not at all. And it's crazy, it's like, as a young athlete, as, as that, that kid there at 14 years old doing the Young Athletes League, I think everyone always wants to be like an Olympic champ, but you can't sort of find the path to get there. And it's just crazy that in those years that I've sort of like came through. And yeah, I can't believe it's 2016 now. I mean, nine, nine years and on. And you know, the thing for me, especially going to Anfield and seeing you there with the kids, it's like you've gone on and done the same thing, giving back. That It really feels that like that's important to you, as well as obviously your athletic success. Yeah, definitely. I, I always like take the time to like um, talk to kids and at the track, especially at my track. And when I do competitions, I still did the Mercedes Head Champs this year and there was a couple of kids who came up to me there. So yeah, it's, it definitely means a lot and it meant a lot to me that day. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the pick. <laughs> Sing it. And Katerina will be in action this afternoon on BBC One along with Jessica Ennis-Hill and Mo Farah at the London Anniversary Games. We'll be there to capture it all next. To leggings on, you know, yeah. always. I always had a house full of boys because she used to play football every day. She never wouldn't let me buy any pink. No pink? No pink. I was always like active and moving around and stuff, but my mum put me in um, ballet dancing lessons from quite a young age because that's what she did as a profession. Okay. She was a dancer and she danced around the world and stuff, and that's sort of the life she likes. Not pushed on me, but she wanted for me. So, literally from a very young age, I was in like ballet shoes. I was dancing, doing tap dance. But then when she said that is it, I'm not doing it. I was heartbroken. I was going to say because she had uh, a chance to go to royal ballet, and she's like, I'm not doing it. So the teacher was saying, Well, how about if I gave the private lessons? The teacher was saying, and she was like, No, I've had enough. So I said, Okay, if you're going to stop, you need a hobby of some sort. And do you think your mum secretly wanted you to be a dancer? Yeah, she did. Like, literally the day I stopped dancing, like, her and the dance teacher were both crying their eyes out. Oh. I know, and we went through a number of different things. So I did football, and then I did keyboard lessons, and then luckily, during my school, um, we did this athletics competition at the end of each year, and it's to the track I still train on to this day. Literally, that was the one thing I was excited about at the end of each school year, is when well, the summer's coming, I'll get to do athletics. So, Kat? This is where you grew up. This is your old school. Yeah. The only thing that changed is um, these extra railings. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about these railings. Just... Were you one of those naughty kids that <laughs> tried just... to escape? <laughs> Life is a journey. Heptathlete Katerina Johnson Thompson is about to embark on one of the most important legs of her journey. The 23-year-old from Liverpool is close to her chance to compete on the biggest stage for the biggest prize in sport, an Olympic gold medal. My name is Darren Campbell and in 2004 I won an Olympic gold medal for Great Britain in the 4x100m relay in Athens. Four years earlier in Sydney I won an individual silver in the special access to Kat in her qualification and run up to Rio in her quest to become Olympic champion. I used to live in Netherley in Liverpool and it was me, my mum, 
my nan, my granddad, and my nan's sister all in one house growing up. So I had a big family, even though I was the only child. She was an absolute joy. She was a tomboy. A tomboy? She was a tomboy. Um, you know, when I, I thought I had a girl, I thought I bought all little dresses, but she wasn't having any of it. As soon as she could walk, um, she was 200 metres. I loved my career. Athletics gave me so much and taught me so much. I know that to win any medal, you need to work hard, very hard. After bursting on the scene as a teenager at the London Olympics, Katerina has gone on to win major championship medals and has become one of the biggest stars in the sport. Last year, with a heptathlon goal in her sights, she endured heartbreak, but now on the eve of the Rio Olympics, she has Jessica Ennis-Hill and a top podium position in her sights. Over the past few months, I've been given